Kidding! Trolling! Got you! I got you, Irish. I got you, Irish. No. <laughs> got you this time. I got you guys! Ha! <laughs> got him. <clears throat> I am a professional streamer. <clears throat> got both you and Irish, Ronit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mega <Lol. laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew I'd get you guys. Welcome, welcome. Play this like I fan. Oh! <laughs> Super animated, just, just to trigger you guys. All right, welcome in. Welcome in, everyone. Welcome in. Got us in the first half. Welcome to Side Quest. Uh, weekly TLDR gaming news. Sorry we missed Side Quest last week. Uh, there just wasn't really uh, any sort of news last week. So I didn't really want to just sit in front of you guys and not say anything and talk uh, about nonsense. But yeah, we got a bunch of news. Uh, we got a bunch of new stuff this week. So let's get right into it. Hopefully you guys are going to uh, find this enlightening. So first off, before we begin, Quick channel thank yous to our tier 4 as well as tier 5 channel members Uche Madara, Nightmare Warrior, K Robert, Z Shadow Dragons, Oscar Young, Padam Vogler, Phantom Manager, Mike Osborne, Cat the Queen, Brax Miles, CJ Turner, Dina, Positive Sarcasm, Fast Vlogs, as well as Austin. We're on the second page, guys. We're on the second page of Tier 4 and Tier 5 channel members. I remember when we first started doing side quests, we had like three uh, people, which is... Uh, so we're, we're, we're moving up in the world. Thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, it does mean uh, a great deal and continue to help support the channel uh, to allow me to keep making content uh for you guys like this so a big thank you to our tier four as well as tier five channel members if you guys want to learn about channel memberships you can find it in the link in the description below but yeah let's get right into the news so we have a, this is exciting this is exciting so first off we'll talk about the new games that got announced for game pass so this was announced several days ago so we have shredders dungeon of national buck the amulet chaos Tainted Grail, Zero Escape, the Nonary Games, Norco, F121, Crusader 3, as well as Weird West. So that was announced yesterday, but but today they announced that Tunic was added literally this morning. So Tunic is kind of like a dungeon-esque crawler. You play as a very cute fox dressed up as Link. I've seen early review scores and they've actually been really, really high. We're actually playing the beginning of this game tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will be the quote unquote channel members chat. Uh, so basically it will be the channel members live stream. So uh, the chat will only be for channel members. Everyone can watch it, but um, chat for the first time will only be for channel members. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just slight changes of how we'll be doing the exclusive channel members live stream. Uh, well, the last couple times we've done it literally just channel members, but based on how YouTube set up, even the channel members had difficulty finding it. So yeah, so now we're just going to make it available to viewable for everyone, but it'll be a channel members chat. So this was a nice addition. I was actually, so I was actually like contacting the company who made this game and I actually contacted the Xbox as well. And uh, no one was basically, I wasn't getting a review. <laughs> I was not getting any sort of review code from either the developers or Xbox. And this is probably why they I, I, they had like a Xbox had like their Xbox ID indie showcase this morning. And I think that this was probably going to be the highlight. It was going to be the highlight of the show. And they just didn't want to let it slip uh, because people have been asking for like months now because it is an Xbox as well as PC exclusive. Will it be on Game Pass? Will it be on Game Pass? And they gave, they were kind of basically no, it's not going to be on Game Pass. But then they dropped it uh, this morning, so uh, that it will be on Game Pass. So uh, th there you go. So once again, we will be playing this tonight in a few hours for the channel member live streams so next moving on so genshin impact 2.6 uh, is being released uh later this week 
I am playing Genshin Impact basically occasionally on stream as well as on um, on my own time. There actually has been some leaks of what exactly the channel member channel the uh, the the character banners is gonna be. So Ayaka and Venti have been leaked, and then Ayaka's brother Ayato is also um, going to be featured. They all they're having a 2.6 live stream on this Friday this morning, uh, so I'll probably be checking that out as well. So yeah, if you're a Genshin Impact fan, 2.6. Uh, releases very very soon and then we also have new banners and new content coming for the game next up we have ea is not going to be having their ea play showcase later this year so ea play is basically if you, if you guys aren't familiar e3 the biggest gaming event of the year uh ea has stepped out of being officially part of e3 for the last two or three E3s, they kind of rent out their own building and then they kind of just do their own thing at the side. It's a it's a gigantic hassle. It's a it's honestly a huge headache. It's a pain in the ass for like content creators like myself when they have it separately. But who cares what you guys? You guys don't care about that, anyways. But anyways, so usually they do a, a showcase around E3, but apparently they're not going to be doing any sort of big showcase this year. Whereas they're gonna be transitioning to more kind of like Xbox and so we do with their like mini segments showcasing specific games throughout the entire year. I feel like E3 EA is kind of in like a weird place right now. They've released a bunch of stinkers as of late. Um, obviously, battle the last Battlefield wasn't that great. Um, yeah, they just straight up just dipped uh, there. So the last Battlefield sales were disappointing. Mass Effect Andromeda didn't launch that well. Then we also have their that other game. Crap, I've got I have already forgotten what that other game that the Bioware was working working on. That just like Anthem, Anthem, Anthem was a stinker. So they always they obviously still have their big sports games. FIFA is always huge, but uh, they they need a win. EA needs a win basically. So instead of trying to do one big showcase they're going to be doing a bunch of other smaller ones throughout the entire year so one thing they're going to be talking about is the next mass effect the next dragon age probably uh so that's those are big i'm really excited for the next mass effect i think that they i think that the next mass effect bioware is going to absolutely kill it out of necessity because the the Mass Effect franchise has been on basically a steady decline since Mass Effect 2 in terms of fan appeal. So yeah, anyways, so hopefully Mass Effect gets back on the uh, on the train. Uh, so it's just in terms of like once again, on the, so state of play, there's another state of, there was a state of play last week and there's another state of play this week. Uh, this week's state of play is going to be focused on showcasing more of the new Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy game. So I'm really excited to check this out. I've, I've recently gotten, to, I've recently just gotten, gotten into Harry Potter pretty deeply uh up until last year i had never read or watched any of the movies um at all like i'm like i'm not kidding you I never read one book or watched any movie but my fiance tara is a huge harry potter fan and then uh, as of late we've been actually listening to the audiobooks and then we've after we finish the book we've been watching the movies so we are on the final book uh right now so I'm really excited. So hopefully I can finish the uh, we can finish the audiobook before this game comes out for the final book. So yeah, if you're a Harry Potter fan, Hogwarts Legacy looks is promising. Uh, it, it looks like a promising game to be honest with you, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan. So I'm hoping that isn't going to it's going to pay out. So on the news of television adaptations of video games, which has never traditionally gone well, especially if you take a look at more recent examples, um, Uncharted. Uncharted is <laughs> okay, I guess. So officially there is a God of War television show being worked on as well by Amazon. I This in itself wasn't a really big news, but 
it kind of like it was kind of like a perfect storm because they've also mentioned that there are other projects being worked on as well uh, from Amazon. There's going to be a Fallout television series, a Mass Effect uh, television series, and although reviews are out now, uh, on the 24th is the premiere of the Halo television series. So if you're a, a so I think that maybe the, like I feel like. I don't know, man. I feel like Hollywood is running out of ideas. I feel like Netflix and like those game, like television services are running out of ideas. We pretty much were like really exhausting the uh, the superhero content because basically every superhero has their own television show. Uh, so I think we're, now we're, we're we're reaching to the, we're reaching again. We're going we're we're gonna try the video game thing. We'll see if we can make video games into reputable and viable television shows. So I, I don't know why I, I'm not excited. I know I know I should be. I don't know why I should be. Why oh, I'm not? But I'm just until someone does it correctly, I'm, I just don't get excited for television ad, or movie adaptations of video games. But yeah, yeah. Anyways, next. So you guys remember Perfect Dark, that franchise, long ago on Xbox. It was actually going to be revitalized uh, fairly soon. But unfortunately, based on the news that I've read up on, that the development cycle for the new Perfect Dark has not... It's in a tough spot right now. They keep basically redoing it. Studio people are leaving, uh, like like large exoduses of the studio, and then Crystal Dynamics took over. Square Enix, uh, Square Enix took over its production uh, to help co-develop the game to kind of get production back on on pace. So yeah, it's anytime you have these situations where the production of the game is kind of in influx, you have. You have studio members leaving, founders leaving, developer developers leaving. It's not a great sign for the overall direction of the game. Uh, it usually, it honestly, usually never results in a very good product. Anytime you have different studios picking up the game, I've never actually thought or heard of a situation where it's ended up well. So yeah, Perfect Dark is kind of like development hell right now. If you're if you're looking for that game, any okay. game. Uh, speaking of developers, so the developers of Until Dawn, super massive games, so, which un, Until Dawn was like a really fantastic game in its own right. But the developers, super massive, have kind of been basically super massive games kind of peaked with the very first game with Until Dawn, and they've released a bunch of other games before, as well on PlayStation. Um, some like ones that are like supposed to be like cooperative couch games. I played a couple of them. Then they obviously have the the series that Bandai Namco does with the Dark Pictures anthology. Uh, but basically, they haven't really released anything that great since until dawn. But it looks like they they were, they were actually picked up by 2K, the publisher of Grand Theft Auto, and they announced that they are working on a new game, which is called The Quarry. No release date yet. We do have. They do plan to have a release trailer as well as a release, uh, basically some some more information of the game coming out um, tomorrow as well. So yeah, yeah. They 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 were just pumping out games left and right, but and they haven't really nailed. They haven't, despite kind of creating the same types of games like Until Dawn, they have never been able to recreate that Until Dawn magic. Uh, and yeah, so I feel I, I really feel like the, I really feel that they're a company that needs a win, basically. Um, so yeah. Anyways, oh one th one piece of note that I left out is that. Uh, that Resident Evil 2, 3, and 7 will be getting free PlayStation 5 upgrades. So if you if you have those games on PlayStation 2, uh, PlayStation 4, uh, you can get upgrade to the PlayStation 5 version coming out later this year for free. So yeah, um, yeah. So 
happy to confirm the original PlayStation 4 Xbox versions of these games will carry over to their respective upgrade versions. DLC that comes with Resident Evil 7 will transfer over as well. So I'm excited to check out Resident Evil 7 again. Resident Evil 7 was a fantastic game in its own right. The first half was absolutely terrifying. So, yeah. Anyways, and then the big news. The big news is that Elden Ring has, within two weeks of release, has already sold 12 million copies. That is a lot, a lot of copies of Elden Ring. I actually saw a breakdown of the sales for this game. And despite the PC version being vastly inferior at launch anyways, depending on when you're watching this video, the majority of the sales have been on PC, which is, uh, which is absolutely, which is absolutely bana bana bananas. Like 80% of the sales have been on PC thus far, which is crazy. So IGN actually does a pretty good job of breaking down if you were to compare other from software games. So so in comparison, Sek Sekiro Shadows Dies Twice uh, from Software's last game sold 2 million copies in 10 days. So <laughs> they went from 2 million to 12 million copies. And then Bloodborne, a PlayStation 4 exclusive, sold only 1 million copies within its first two weeks of launch in 2015. So and then... So and if you combine Dark Souls like the entire Dark Souls franchise lifetime, like Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, they've only sold in total combined lifetime together 8 million copies worldwide. So yeah, it is, the, it is just crushing it right now. Just crushing it in terms of sales. Just absolutely insane. It's a good game. Um, I'm kind of taking a break from it right now. I had reached like the quote unquote halfway point of the game, but I felt like I just felt like I emotionally needed to take a little bit of a break from it. I uh, probably will stream, do some streams later today uh, and resume my series of Elden Ring uh, later today and later tomorrow. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the news we have. Uh, I'll, I will take questions now if anyone has them. So what are your thoughts on Starfield? I haven't watched the sneak peek. I didn't even know there was a sneak peek of Starfield of this week. I don't think there will be microtransactions for it, to be honest with you. It doesn't make sense to me for a game like Starfield to have, especially since it's going to, especially since it's Microsoft's, it's going to be Microsoft's big game for Q4 this year. Um, so I don't think they kind of want to take away from the launch by announcing that it's going to have microtransactions. So, yeah. I haven't heard anything about the Dead Space remake. I don't... Are we talking about Starfield, Ronan? Production hell? I, I, I honestly have high hopes for Starfield. I think the next Mass Effect game will have to be good out of necessity. Whatever. There's really no... Like, I don't think that there's really any rush to get the next Mass Effect done because EA realizes that if they... If it's not good... It's kind of like... It's kind of like that moment after the release of Assassin's Creed Unity, Unity, um, where I feel like the franchise has taken so many beatings up until this point, and then Ubisoft realized like the next one after Unity had to be really, really good, and then they kind of went stop trying to pump out an Assassin's Creed game every single year. So, I think that. Would, however long Bioware needs to take to make sure that the next Mass Effect game is a really good one, I think they're going to be given ample opportunity to make sure that it's a good one. So I, I, I have really high hopes and that it's going to be a really good game. Uh, I have no idea what the story of Elden Ring is, to be honest with you. 
like i i don't play you don't play star you don't play souls born type games for their story you just play for their amazing gameplay you go around killing things as many things as possible try not to die as often as you possibly can when it's go when is ghostwire go uh, ghostwire tokyo is going to be starting next week um 22nd i think 22nd so yeah we'll start my series then why do you always play games on playstation is so hang <laughs> I wish, I wish Sony was paying me. Honestly, it'd make my life a lot easier. Um, so the reason why I play most of my games is um, on PlayStation is just because overall I like the for non first person shooter based games. I just prefer the controller uh, to the to, I prefer the PlayStation controller to over towards the Xbox controller. So, like, this is like the the PlayStation controller is like the most be like the best universal controller in the world. Um, it just it, platforming RPGs, ARPGs. I just prefer it. Uh, whereas the Xbox controller, which I have right here, which I have hooked up to my PlayStation, uh, my PC, it's more geared towards it's more geared towards first person shooters. So it's just a controller preference thing. Um, honestly, it was my favorite Soulsborne game. Uh, it's, it's probably, I'm gonna go on a limb here, even though I haven't finished it. It's probably gonna be Elden Ring at this point. The world building in Elden, Elden Ring has just been so fantastic and so great. They did a fantastic work job of just recreating the entire world. Yeah, I have an Xbox Series. Uh, it's actually over there. I'm gonna be. I did not. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be playing uh, Tunic tonight on my Xbox Series X because it's uh, Xbox exclusive, free on Game Pass. Uh, did you get? I never got a chance to play Tales of Arise. At all. So. Any more questions? Questions? Uh, and as a way for more questions, we can talk about just general plans for coming up the next couple of days. Um, so I'm actually kind of getting over a cold. Um, I was feeling terrible yesterday. <laughs> so, uh, but um, I feel much better now. So I'm going to start live stream more and pumping out more content. So the I released, I finished my Horizon review. It is viewable now. Uh, in early access for channel members. I think it goes live for the general public on Saturday for everyone else. Um, channel members just get to view it a little bit earlier. I'm quite proud of it. I thought I did a really good job uh, on the editing and nailed my points as quickly as possible. I'm gonna continue playing Elden Ring uh, later today. And then as well as we have, I'm trying to find time with Terra to continue. It takes two at some point but it's just it's difficult to find time that matches both our schedules we have tunic tonight at 7 p.m eastern standard time uh for the channel member live stream that's available to everyone and then we also have ghostwire tokyo coming out next week and then i have to have i'm almost done it i don't know why i just don't sit down and do it but um i need to finish the i need to finish the entire series I did not play Babylon's Fall. Uh, your, my Horizon score is much higher than I expected. Uh, no spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers. But it was still a really good game. It just, it, like I said, it. If it had not been for the technical difficulties that the game had, it would have been much higher. Like it would have been top tier score. But I had to. It was just there was just no way about it. The game needed more time in the oven to to be polished and they didn't give it that time so my review score reflected of it um yeah who's my favorite in Genshin I don't know yet I haven't I have not quote unquote decided who's gonna be my main yet 
so I'm still kind of working on that. Until I decide that, I can't really give you an answer on who's my favorite character in Genshin Impact. Will I be playing Hogwarts Legacy? Most likely, most likely. I probably will be playing Hogwarts Legacy. Um, but yeah. Yeah, especially since it was a PlayStation exclusive game. I just, I honestly felt like the reason why they As a PlayStation, like as a PlayStation game, I expect like a certain level of quality for PlayStation games. But I feel like, like I said, I think that I think that the God of War will not be released this year. I think the God of War is going to be pushed until March next year, 2023. And if they put Horizon near, like if it, if Horizon would have been their quote unquote big game for like Q4 this year, if they would have pushed it to like October, November this year, I think that's too close of a release window to God of War Ragnarok. And they didn't want to like cannibalize like the sales of each other because realistically I play a lot of games, but the, the average consumer buys only like two to three games per year. Uh, that's how, how many games people play or buy in a year. So it's just, I think they just wanted to prevent each other from like cannibalizing each other's sales. What do you think of the new upcoming Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? I'm really excited for the next Pokemon game, but I'm just kind of sad that it's still running on Nintendo Switch hardware. I was really hoping that the next generation of Pokemon games would be on whatever the next console the Switch is going to be. Still kind of holding hope that it's going to be cross-generational. So whatever the next console that leaked a couple weeks ago will be, I was kind of hoping that it would be done. I will be on there exclusively, but if it's cross-generational with some sort of upgrades, I'd be really excited about that. Okay, I did not. Uh, I I booted up Gran Turismo. Uh, I did not play it because I didn't feel like it. I, I'm not a huge racing game fan, to be honest with you. Uh, but I did boot it up and gave it a try. Of course, everyone on YouTube will be playing God of War Ragnarok when it releases. Of course, I'm going to be playing it. All right. How long have I played a Pokemon game? I've been playing Pokemon games since the original since the original one came out. Red and blue and red like over 20 years ago. So, um been playing I've been a long-term Pokemon fan. Um I I think the long I had like the longest I ever played a Pokemon game was Pokemon Emerald. I had like over 200 hours in Pokemon Emerald. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I know like I know that we like to say we don't mind waiting, but it's just the economics of selling video games. Like we say that we don't mind waiting for games to be fully completed, but the economics of video games is that you have to hit you have to release a certain amount of games at a certain amount of time frame so they don't interfere with the sales of other ones. Yeah. I I do not have the economic means to start up my own game company. We are not making we are not making that doctor disrespect money. <laughs> right? So I would love to. Uh I would love to start my own game company, but I don't have the uh I don't have the knowledge or the financial backing uh to make a game company. So that's just the reality. I uh, I am a I am I am a YouTuber. I am a quote unquote gaming influencer. So anyways. All right, everyone, that is your side quest for this a week. Hopefully we learned something today. You guys got your fill of TLDR gaming news uh, and I give you guys slight updates to the channel. Uh, thank you everyone for coming out. <laughs> go fund me, go fund, uh, go fund me a gaming company, guys. You guys, you guys start that up for me, okay? Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for coming out. 